Hey everyone, the stream looks like it's going. Make sure levels and everything are right. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, no one's in the room yet, but uh, for anyone watching in the future, a replay, uh, thanks for stopping by. A little bit different video here, doing uh, doing some colorization. Um, working my way back into doing this. I uh, got a commission to do this uh, portrait of... Uh, in this portrait, he's Major General uh, George Armstrong Custer. This photo is from about the end of the Civil War, so sometime 1865, uh, because by 1866 he'll be mustered out of the volunteer service and will revert to his regular army rank, um, which will eventually be Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, let me see, what rank would he have been? So, yeah, so Major, he became Major General, U.S. Volunteers, April 15th, so right at the end of the, uh, after the surrender, actually. He was already a Brevet Major General in the Volunteers and in the U.S. Army itself, but a Brevet is a temporary rank. Um, and then, uh, was mustered out of the Volunteer Service February 1st, 1866, and I guess would have reverted back to... He would have reverted back to captain, I think, because he was captain of the 5th Cavalry. Um, he was actually promoted to captain of the 5th Cavalry in uh, 1864, May 8th, 1864. Um, but by July 28th, uh, 1866, he was lieutenant colonel in the 7th Cavalry and would retain that rank for the next 10 years, I believe, until his death. At the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876, June 25th. All right, so anyway, you can see over here I got a, I got a painting. Basically, this painting is probably based is based on this uh, photo, and so I'm going to be using the painting as uh, kind of a reference. Uh, we got the normal, basically Union blue uniform with these uh, extra a uh, little collar thing with the stars on it um so he um union officers would actually have to get their uniforms made themselves they'd have to pay for them they'd have to get them tailored and so there would be some different styles you can see uh custer got a little bit of a different style he's got himself a nice uh, red scarf here not exactly sure what this um is on the scarf Looks like it's embroidered into it. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, and usually, you know, when you're doing these colorizations, you kind of want to research these things pretty closely. Since I have this uh, painting, though, I didn't really look in to see what this scarf is. And while we're at it, though, let's... Uh, Custer's red uh, scarf. See if I can find anything about that. Did a search. Um, the Untold Truth, Custer Comical Clown. I'm not really seeing. <coughs> the Red Cloth Vandals. I'm not sure what the he had that red cloth like Custer there you go that painting okay yeah I haven't seen any that's an interesting website I think that was like a different of Vanda a new form of vandalism and stuff I'm not seeing anything about his uh, distinctive red. Let's see if I can find this. Custer's just 
distinctive red scarf. Come on, there's gotta be something. There's a lot of stuff and it's just kind of trying to find that uh trying to find the right information Now here's an interesting one actually had a green uniform too. Now this is a different uniform. You can see the um, different uh, embroidery. And that actually might be a different picture that I uh, actually colored and maybe it's inaccurate because it might've been green. Uh, Civil War Talk's a good place to find a lot of information like that. I'm not finding anything uh, specifically about that uh, scarf. So. so sometimes you can't find anything. Um, I'm not going to spend too much more time looking for something right now. Um, I want to get a little bit of work done here. Um, I actually uh, have uh, turned off the visibility on some stuff because I did actually start work on this before. Um, I'm not very uh, organized and... Might be working on my uh, technique going forward here, changing it a little bit. But right now what I do, usually for my photos, is I have this kind of brownish layer. Let's just take all those off. Um, originally, I would, I originally, I think I only put on like this kind of blue thing, but that kind of made it, that's why a lot of my earlier stuff kind of has this kind of copper look to it. I, in fact, I might not have had anything. Then what I started doing is I started putting a little bit of brown, kind of warm it up. And there actually are some filters you could probably just use instead. Filter layer, like a photo warming filter layer. But I like to do this kind of brown, uh, the opacity, soft light, opacity 40%. And then I put on this blue, opacity 25%, kind of gives this reddish. I probably could just do a kind of reddish layer like this, but this is what I did. And it just seems to work and I've just kept it. Um, and I sometimes, I might actually, not a hundred percent sure, but I might on the more recent ones have turned this up to a hundred. That's why they have that more reddish, a little bit more, um, red to the colors. Um, so this template might be out of date. And so I'm going to have to check that by opening one of my newer colorings. Then I just put this up kind of background. You kind of see that kind of blues it back out again. Um, so just some different things I do. Lots of lots of overlays and stuff to just kind of get different looks. So let's zoom in on there. I've already done a chunk of the uniform, as you can see. I've started outlining it. And then now I used to just kind of just go, oh, okay, the pants are going to be the same blue. But this time I was, I have a number of little different uniform variation colors. And I was like, you know what? Today I'm going to try to do the pants slightly different color. And you can barely tell, but they are two different colors. And probably if we adjust brightness and other things, you will, it will be a little bit distinctive. You'll be able to tell that they're slightly different, even though they should be kind of similar colors because they are the Union Blue. Um, the gloves, the same thing. Gloves, I usually just use the shirt collar color. So this is the color I use for any kind of white area. The stars, that stripe right there. It's kind of this off cream kind of color. But I realized that it's like I kind of actually need to put a little bit more color into these gloves. A little bit more color. And you don't want to just do one color sometimes. 
Um, I know people do, and you can get away with it, and you'll get a decent coloring. Most of my colorings are like that. It's just kind of one color. But I think if you just add a little bit more, you see here I kind of a little slightly different color. Here I got this. See, it just a little bit different texture is going on. Um, going a little bit further up. So this one, I'm still playing with the color on this, but there's the red scarf. Um, as we go forward, um, I'll probably adjust that color. Reds are always a little bit difficult to get just that right red. I tend to go a little bit more muted, usually on mine, but you kind of see it is a pretty distinctive red. I'm going to go with that for now. Um, what happens when you go there, just different places you can go and see kind of fades it's a little too red like that um we could also go um just different obviously some of these you don't want to use i like to you know basically overlay or soft lights the really the best one to use um you can see this group i have here this one i have color this is for the face area that's just kind of makes that gives it a little bit more punch but mostly everything else i just do soft light otherwise it just kind of looks weird for example let's put this to color and you'll see what i mean actually doesn't change anything real oh wait that's eye whites never mind red scarf uh switch it to color you can see if i switch it to color it looks like that that's a little much that's why what you do is you probably put it in a group you can make the group color and then the the layer itself soft light i don't know how it all works but i've been getting decent results okay i got a number you can see that i've got a lot of different kind of golds bronzes for different metals i don't think i have anything in this layer no this one this one so basically usually what i do is I, this is what i used to do all the time was just this kind of color and it does pretty good actually but i like to add another metal layer just to kind of give it just a little variation it's very hard to tell but your your colors are not just going to be one solid color always i believe there might be yeah there's some more so i use this color too again you can barely tell kind of telling this button there's some slightly slight variations in the colors just a little bit and then that's about it so far that i've done and then i th then just kind of look at the skin now the skin is a far way off that's just putting in a base layer we're going to throw a lot of that over the hair as well varying degrees and then go through and kind of back it off or put um, some different reds and blues and other stuff to really give it that lifelike look. All right, I'm going to, I believe since he's a cavalry, I mean, he is a general in this and I, I don't think, General's pants had stripes usually, and if they did, I think they were yellow. But even, and that's the thing too. He is he is leading cavalry division, but generals even of the cavalry have this blue strap. If he was um, let's say in this he was a captain or a, I believe even a colonel, this strap would actually be uh, yellow, and he would then. But I think the pants the pants would have. A, I think because he's a general, has more of a gold stripe. Custers. <coughs> I got something in my throat. Custers. General uniform. Pants. If I can find anything there. And what I also do is I, you know, sometimes I'll look at different uh, photos that other people have colorized. Got to be careful because sometimes they get things wrong. So here's one colored by Richard, uh, Richard White. 
see how he did that floor. I, I'm still curious how he did that floor because that's what we got for a floor here. And I, I tend to, I, I made it some like garish orange and green. I really like the way he did this floor, but how he did that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, basically we're looking at the same exact thing um, that we're doing right here. Custer, same uniform, everything. So I always like to do that, just reference other people's works too to see because now I've I've run into um if you if you're ever colorizing if you're, let's say you're colorizing Sherman don't look at my Sherman for his eye color because I have the wrong eye color I gave him blue eyes, um but I'll do that I'll look at some people and say okay they they thought he had blue eyes, oh well, this is the kind of color they used for the spurs, or whatever else. Um, you can get a get a general idea. Uh, working off of other people, just seeing what they went with, and then giving your style and everything to it. So here he's got that gold. I think that's what it would be. Looks like he's got... Now see here, he's got hit, uh, the gold and a, a gold star there versus our painting. Now, not sure when this painting is from and how accurate it is, but... I'm going off this painting for now. It's a very quick fix if we find out that, yeah, indeed. Let's see. Find. Like, and these are, these are more pictures that you want to look at. Different uniforms. There's his uh, um, West Point cadet uniform. This is that uh, greenish uniform he had. And now I kind of actually need to go back and because I do have a picture that I did right here, this one. And it's kind of hard to tell, so it's not the end of the world. But this would be that green one. I probably should go back and kind of adjust it a little bit. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to tell even in that photo. <coughs> There's another shot of that uh, shell jacket. Kind of greenish. Um, what I want to find is I want to find the one with the collars. That will give us a good reference. Here you got more of a standard coat for a general. And you can see he's even wearing that. Yeah, then you get this one, or that collar, and maybe that's something that's separate. That's not, maybe that's not part of the something you wore underneath or whatever. Yeah, sometimes you can spend quite a while kind of researching things. Here's another one of Custer, back when he had some mutton chops, and he was uh, a staff officer because I think he still has blue there, basically. I'm surprised I can't find uh there's one of my pictures right there showing up. Worcester House. Yeah, like I said, you know, sometimes a little little awkward doing this in the live stream kinda looking. Um probably something I should have looked at before, but I'm not I'm just not seeing anything right now. Um, I'm going to do one more of a general unit. Um, Custer's uh, general Custer's form so Custer's uniform, see if we can find some stuff. Also have to be careful because sometimes you'll you'll find something that's inaccurate. It's a, it's not actually his uniform. It's just a replica. Now here's a, now here's someone has already colored this. I'm hoping that I can at least color it as good as this. Um, that looks pretty good. Actually, that's a good one. I wonder who colored that one. 
yeah, that's what it's going to look like, I hope. And I like, you know, right there already you can kind of see it's like, okay, that's something different. They did a different color blue. And so I'm going to actually kind of steal that idea. Because now that I'm looking, you can kind of tell it is a different, but it is something different. Here we got like a model. Kind of like this. Yeah, maybe it's just something underneath. So. <coughs> man, I am. Sorry about that. There we go. That's probably a replica. Kind of got that light blue. I wish I could see one a little closer. I'm not the first person to uh, color this one, obviously. Um... Yeah, here this one's a little bit more subtle kind of like what i was looking at you see he didn't make it as red kind of got that burgundy that's where i was kind of going this is probably what mine would have looked like originally uh, but i think i'm going to make sure that make that red a little more pop to it and that collar we're going to want to have it just be a little bit distinctive i'm not sure about the color of star and the stripe but even the color of the stars are up for interpretation because you'll see um like in the pictures, they look very white. They, they they look very white, but technically they almost look the same color as that. Could be when you do look at the uniforms themselves. We get a good uniform here. Here again, we got a good. Oh no, that's another colored one. I like that they put it in front of a different background. You know, saw so stuff like this too, where like they they found some information that says that it's blue like that. Maybe that's maybe that has something with the cavalry. He's wearing his cavalry uh, shirt underneath. Maybe. <coughs> Damn. All right. So. That's basically what I'm going to go with. We're going to. Here you can see the costume. This is. What is this from? Night at the museum or whatever. There's not much difference. You get a better look at what that. Uh, metal is. And you can see the star. The star is. They're basically white on these. Um, other ones I see they're a little bit. You know, a little bit more. There's some gold inlaid in there. Or some gold thread. and Or something. a scarf here but that scarf doesn't have that uh metal on it Buster. scarf what's up there that the one that it is <clears throat> here they painted it uh they colored it a uh, blue but if i'm looking at it looks like not sure what that Custer one is, but it does kind of is matching. Might be it. Might actually be the Seventh Cavalry. Yeah, it's the Seventh Cavalry Regiment badge. Okay, well, let's look that up to make sure we get what that actually looks like. Seventh Cavalry. That's not giving me. Now was part of the seventh cavalry at uh oh why I keep thinking it's at Gettysburg or something right now. Seventh Cavalry. Yeah, because that would be after the You know, that's what he would be wearing um in command of his uh of the 
of the U.S. Cavalry. That was when he was commanding a little bighorn and everything, but not as a general. So kind of confusing. Maybe he was already reverting and kind of was having a mix. But yeah, right now I just got this gold. We'll go back to this later, maybe in a future live stream. This is kind of a long live stream already. Um, really haven't done anything. Let's do some, let's actually get some stuff done. We'll go back and fix the details later. Um, let's finish the uniform quickly here. And I'll just fill that in. Yeah, I got some red there because I don't know if I actually have it colored. Kind of hard to tell. One thing I sometimes do, sometimes just bump up the brightness. I can. But there's just nothing really. Kind of just got to guess. Hope someone doesn't turn up their screen or blast the brightness themselves and find all your little flaws. Don't want to go that big. Kind of guessing that the uniform is back here. Does have the scarf or would go up there usually? I'm gonna fill in around the buttons, and um, the way I have my my uh, my brush, I have the hardness at zero. That means it gives a nice. See right here, it kind of has that soft edge. I go the higher the hardness, very solid. I like to do soft because then you kind of get a little bit of color bleed. You're going to get that color kind of blending with the other stuff. You're not going to have just a hard line of color. As you, especially on a picture like this, it's going to kind of, in these closed zoomed, it's going to be bleeding between the pixels. Um, on a natural printed color or a printed um picture. You know, and you kind of see there's a little red bleeding over. You kind of get that. That color kind of just, your eyes are going to fill that color in over there. I think. Now what I can do is I'll just do the fill. See how that just changes. I got this gap. Please just go in here. Fill that in. Um, actually the turn the hardness all the way up to hundred right here makes it pretty easy, but you got to be careful because you'll get into this area where you do have that, um, softness. So I usually just keep it soft and it takes a little longer. Not too bad. As I said, well, if we go back and we want to change that color, make it a little lighter. Just erase it from this layer. Maybe even use this color or a lighter one. Uh, right now, I kind of... Yeah, we'll see. Like I said, it's like this painting has one thing, a bunch of other stuff, and I haven't found a definitive... his actual uniform. Those, uh... Those lapels... This is the first time doing a live stream doing coloring, I think. Every other video I've done, coloring video, I've just done a sped up process. You guys can just, from beginning to end, about two minutes or whatever. But I kind of want to do some more live streams, doing some history stuff. Um, if you read the description, I'm, I'm right now kind of just struggling with, uh, struggling with things right now. Nothing major. We're doing all right. I mean, I'm I'm incredibly blessed as it is, but kind of feeling. I've been doing trucking for the last two years. Just coming back to America from China. Um, my wife is actually pregnant with our first baby, and 
Definitely want to get home more. Um, wanted to get home more before that. Was already feeling that. I switched to jobs where I'd be able to get home more, but it, that kind of fell through. Went back to the old place I was working, and um, then I started kind of realizing it's like it's not even just getting home more, but it's also it's like well, I really want a truck for the rest of my life, or I want to do some history or graphic design or YouTube or and obviously. I try to figure out what I can do, what I'm qualified to do. I have a history degree, but no real experience over here in America with any jobs after college. I'm kind of feeling a little like, well, what can I do other than trucking? And I'm kind of being torn apart like that by that right now. Not able to relax. In all reality, this is probably the most relaxed I've been while doing this, I've been thinking about anything else, but I still feel a little guilty even when I'm doing this video. I was going to say I was going to go in here and trace, but you can't trace in there because you can't see what you're doing. I'm uh, going into that other, I'm just hitting the alt key, alt, and then on this uh, black area, it gives you, shows you where you've been coloring. That way you can make sure you're filling in any gaps. And I know there's some a little bit of roughness and hopefully if I remember, I go back and I clean that stuff up. If I don't, it's just kind of an artifact of the coloring process. And usually you don't notice. Sometimes I notice when I'm putting together the final product to put like the, the name and everything on there. And then I notice, I was like, oh, there's a you know, big giant hole there. His skin's all wrong there. Or, I forgot to color that section or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, that's what's been going on. And so that's why I've, on the last few um, content wise going on, on the channel, there just hasn't been much because I've been basically just trying to get back into work. And obviously, working in trucking is an everyday thing, except for the home time. And, uh, and then when I am home, I'm kind of stressing out trying to figure out, like, what's the next move? What job can I get where I'm home every day? Uh, do I go for a local trucking job to stay in trucking? Because I do like trucking, but at the same time, it's... I'd be doing something more. I do have a college degree. I am really interested. I like doing history, amongst other things. Or would I like to do graphic design? make this coloring full-time thing. Then I kick myself for, uh, you know, in China, I was just spending all that time doing this stuff while we had our school and was doing, but I didn't, uh, I guess I never just, I never put enough effort in to develop it into a full-fledged business, whatever. And now that I kind of feel like I need to do that or would want to do that, I don't have the time to do it. I have a lot more other concerns, obviously. Fill those sections in. That's why my voice is kind of quivering and a little... Feeling a little confident. Uh, confidence is a little down right now. And... Like I said, I was home. I was able to go get home uh, Sunday and Monday for Mem or for uh, Labor Day. Uh, I did have a load. I, I got a load running from Rochester, New York to Memphis, Tennessee. I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Uh, picked that up on, I would say, Friday. That have been the 5th? No, 3rd. And usually if I'm picking up something between Rochester and Memphis or Memphis and La Crosse, Wisconsin, those loads are about 700, 800 to 1,000 miles. And you can do those in two days. So if you pick up on you know the 3rd of September, you deliver on the 5th. Well, I looked at the delivery date and it was the 7th. And I'm 
because the uh, Veterans Day, or Veterans Day, Labor Day. And so I was just like, oh, I needed it. I was going to be able to get back at least to our terminal and do laundry, but then I would be stuck just in the middle of nowhere in Ohio or wherever I would stop for the next couple of days on Sunday and Monday away from home. And it's like, okay, it's not worth it if I'm not actually working and making any money. I'm just sitting in the truck. And luckily I was able to just drop that load in at our terminal in Trenton, Ohio, pick up another load from there to go up to the Milwaukee area where I live and basically worked out for the most part. And of course, this morning to deliver that load in the Milwaukee area, I uh, messed up the appointment time, and so I didn't get to. The, they refused the load. And then today, I basically didn't do anything because I got another load that doesn't deliver until nine in the morning tomorrow, only five hours away. I said, "Well, go home, and I'll get up early tomorrow morning and try again." And I'm only going to work a couple days this week because then I'm going to come home for the weekend. And so hopefully I'll be able to do another video like this or get a flight in. Just just take it easy and relax when I'm not working a little bit. <coughs> oh. All right, so you can see the uniform is basically done. Um, Trying to figure out, you got a few areas like that. Not sure exactly. I think that's part of the uniform. Um, make sure you get all the glove parts. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to work on the face here for the next. I'm going to do the face, and then once I get the face done, pretty close. We're going to call it uh, quits on this. Uh, live stream and then I'll do another live stream on a Friday or Saturday when I work and finish off this at least finish off Custer and maybe the background the upper background uh not sure what I'm going to do with the floor um this shouldn't be too hard the table that's not too intricate that I got to get too detailed on it but the floor because you got a number of different colors obviously there that's always a little pain Maybe I'll just cut it off up here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm doing this for commission, actually, for someone has requested this one. They'd like to purchase it, so. And they like my style, so that's always good. That's a little bit of a confidence booster, and it's always nice to be doing. I mean, I, you know, when, I, when the mood strikes me, I love to do the colorings. But again, with the limited time at home and having so many different little hobbies, I like to do the YouTube videos and American Truck Simulator and uh, Flight Simulator and all that. Kind of bounce around. That's that's the big thing. I got to kind of focus. What what do I focus on? And you know, that's one of those little things. I I was incredibly blessed in China to have a school where I was making good money, running my own business with my wife, and that gave us a ton of free time to just do whatever. Um, and I was able to kind of put a lot of time and effort into doing coloring and then kind of started doing other things as well. And we'll just go full opacity right now. And what I'll do. <clears throat> I'm going to do this one with my normal technique, but next, my next coloring, I'm going to try something slightly different because I just watched uh, my friend Mads Madsen. Uh, he's a he's one of the top colorers in the world. He's on a lot of book covers and does stuff for History Channel, and he's kind of where he's he's kind of the guy that taught me, you know, how to you know, my original technique, and I've kind of refined my technique since, and he's helped me refine it in certain ways. As he's learned different techniques. Um, I'm still working on the whole shadows and the atmospheric stuff. Um, and I just watched a recent tutorial he put out in this last year. The way he does it now. Which. I'm going to still do it my way for now. Show you that. So we also put the skin tone. Now I usually put the skin tone just a lot. You, know, you can see the opacity a lot lighter than. He puts it full bore and then works it back with uh, some blue colors. 
This is actually the highest. I usually don't do it this high. I do. I do everything opacity. Um, you could also do it with flow. Basically the same thing, I think. Might be wrong. Like I said, I'll have to try a different thing. Opacity is how it blends through. That's why if you put, and that might be the difference, is that if I put over, like you see, if I keep doing that, it's just going to get, until it gets to 100%. Flow might be slightly different. Let's try flow. Let me see what. Basically the same concept. I think. <clears throat> I usually have done an opacity. That's how I learned it from him originally. He's since changed his techniques slightly, but we all have our own styles and that's okay. I'm going to kind of just back off on the skin tone on the hair. Now, the reason I do that, the reason he taught me to do that is because you kind of, it just helps a little bit, but also at these areas where the skin, the hair is just over the skin. You're always going to have, like out here, not so much, but like on the top of your head, um, he's not a great example. Maybe your mustache area, this area, you're going to have that skin color still kind of showing through a little bit, um, depending on the uh, amount of hair. Twenty seven percent. It's all kind of eyeballing. We're gonna just give that that skin tone go through and and again having that bleed is not the end of the world because you don't want too much though. If you get too excessive it wrong, like you just a sloppy job. But <clears throat> you know, a little bit you can see how it kind of blends into the background and kind of natural. Like here you Kind of lighten that up because it's a little bit too much. But it doesn't need to be perfect because there's going to be that blending, that loose hair. You know, even though the hair is right there, that color sometimes is going to blur because it's there. Uh, your eye, looking at the picture at this point, you're not going to even be able to tell. All right. Um... In copy, that's just a different color. So if I don't like this color for his skin, I want to change it. Eyes, looks like he's kind of got bluish gray eyes. So that, um, keep the opacity there and I can always adjust. Color it some more. You can see the opacity for the layer is 50% anyway, so even if I get 100%, it's not going to be. I like to, you know, this locks it in at a certain point. Then I kind of, I like to go with a slightly lower opacity brush. That way I can kind of go along and figure out where I want that um, coloring. Okay, we're going to kind of go back here. Now, I whites. Um, a lot of other colors, what they do is they just put that skin color in there. I kind of like this red color I've been using. Put that in there. It basically does a little bit more red. Go 100% with that. So now that I'm doing it, you can kind of notice that. And you're like, oh, that's kind of too red. He's like bloodshot. But you zoom out. Look at that. That's kind of where you want it. It's not going to just be that dull gray because... Like you didn't color it at all because there is still color in your eyeball. You know, white, a little bit of reddish. All that. Okay, now these are just different colors I use to kind of you know, give that, um, make it more lifelike. Right now it's just kind of flat. I mean, if you were to if you were to put this out there. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Decent coloring, um, especially the uniform stuff. I mean, that's pretty good coloring, I think. Um, might want to put some different shadow colors. But um, the face is the big one. You can see when you look around the color, uh, the really good colorizations. Um, you you'll see even good, really good colors. They'll sometimes like if there's a lot of people in a scene or if it's very zoomed. You know, very a uh, wide shot of like 90 guys you're you're not going to get so detailed on the faces even though i did i'll show you one um if you guys follow colorized past this is one of my early ones this is from a long time ago 
Um, a hundred. On my complete folder. Talking to myself. So this is one of my early colorings. If it loads. Here, we'll do the comparison shot first. You see, I mean, this has a lot of stuff going on. Um, if I went back to do this, I'd probably want to get a little bit more going on with the ground. But I'm pretty proud of this one. And, of course, this is just a JPEG, so I can't really zoom in. I don't have the high quality. But, you know, and I did... You know, every I did kind of get a little bit of detail and the reds and stuff on each one of these guys' faces, but you're not getting as detailed, obviously, if you're doing. Look how big he is compared to, um, the same shot with a Jackson, not Jackson, um, Custer. Custer is most of the photo, right? That other guy was probably about as tall as this, uh, this uh base. Obviously, the closer you are, the more detail you're gonna want. Life, life. So again, I kind of just start with like a ten percent opacity. Um, this this layer is gonna only be fifty percent anyway. I think this one I usually on the eye. Now, if you look at some of my earlier work, I kind of overdid it on the eyes on these eye bags. Getting slightly better. I say slightly. Now you notice I'm clicking quite a bit actually. And so really I could have just gone 100% opacity here. But you see that. I like to kind of just do 10% because then I can kind of build it up. One area can be a little more. Another area can have it can kind of fade out. This is also good for. I want to put it on the end. Ears, right here on the end of the nose. Obviously, the more you put on the end of the nose, the more he looks like he's been drinking quite a bit. So don't want to overdo it. And kind of just kind of where there's going to be like um, the blood contacting the surface of the skin, where the skin's a little bit thinner, the more blood going on right right around the eyes. And it is, I mean, just look at look at real color color photos of yourself or others. Kinda it's a lot of eyeballing and just getting uh what looks right. Kinda also put in these folds. Do it for the lips a little bit. And be careful with the lips, because if you go too much, you'll look like he's wearing lipstick. Uh, same thing with this one. Now, this one's only 20%. Slightly different color, I think. There's going to be some more. I do. I just put a lot of reds in a lot of places. Kind of put some right here on that cheekbone area. But on the cheek Where there's fat, you kind of get a little bit on those folds right there um depending on the guy depending on how you feel the picture might be taken i mean you gotta remember a lot of these guys especially this picture taken 1865 custer's been out in the field um so he's not gonna be pale right so if you want to give a little bit you can always throw in a little bit of sunburn somewhere or you know the bridge of his nose got a little got a little uh sun on it or something don't be afraid of that and actually these I, I, now that I remember, these two are mostly going to be your eye area, where I kind of use it. Uh, once we get up here, this is going to be more filling in the color on the face. He, right now, he kind of looks a little, a little pale. Now uh, this purple, I kind of put maybe your eye bags a little bit. Now again, he's not too old, so you don't want to give him. Don't want to make him look too bad. Kind of these sockets. That's all right. Again, a little bit of shadow. This is going to go, you're going to put in your shadow areas. 
that. Again, don't go overboard. There is a picture. I, 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 to my horror, I can see it. It just looks like he's wearing blue eye shadow. <laughs> Um, this one's also a good one to kind of kind of run it over these areas where you're going to have that uh, stubble. Kind of little, don't go overboard, but depending on how much like that, uh, that five o'clock shadow, that's literally what this brush will do right here. This color just there. Again, anywhere there's kind of shadows to it. I'll put a little, got that. At shadow. Okay. Now this one's actually going to lighten things up, so I kind of put in the highlight areas. Get on the bridge here. That's just going to pop that even more, really. Now this I like to put, this is just going to kind of be more your fat. Wherever that, kind of like a yellowish orange. And I, I tend to kind of go this T-zone a little bit. A little bit more definition. Get down into the nose. I, I, I definitely like to put a lot on the nose. Because kind of come off the nose, brush it into the area. And kind of let it fade out into that um five o'clock shadow. Kind of put a little bit. Just getting that subtle difference. It's all a lot of shading. Oh, don't want to go overboard over here because again it is in the shadow. Now here are these again, um adding your reds. You can see those raised veins a little bit. You're going to kind of want to put the red over those. I definitely kind of want to blend it just a little bit more. And I kind of do this zone with this red again. The more red you put, obviously, again, the more hot, the more sunburned they might look. And the end of the nose, kind of get that nose really defined. Like I tend to put like the red kind of just down on these kind of the jowl area. Um, now you kind of want to hit the ear as well. On those ridges, that skin, that cartilage, very thin. Obviously, the more you put, the more sunburn it can look. Pretty good. You can see how different that ear is now that uh, you put color in there. Again, don't be afraid to get a little color there, even though there is hair over it. Um, it's not so thick that you're not going to be able to get a little of that color bleeding through. Or the nose. Right here, I mean, right there on your nose, you're going to get a lot of uh, pretty red. Depending on the time of year, it might be pretty red because you're blowing your nose a lot. Do one more little pass. I think he's looking pretty good on those lips. This green again is another kind of kind of subtly put that in that eye area. Folds. Then again, this is going to be kind of like a highlight sort of thing. I want to make that highlight a little brighter. You see, it's all very little stuff. Just kind of very little. Very not noticeable completely. Um, at this point, you can... Basically, we've got our skin done. So what we can do is kind of adjust. Obviously, that's a little too orange pale kind of figure out where we like 
flag doesn't do it. Don't want to be that. That's a little too much. Let's keep it where we had it for now. We can always adjust that. And then we'll do hair and then we'll call that we'll call that good for today. Kinda got distracted trying to find um different uh form stuff. Again here I'm just gonna kinda get a little bit of color because again we got a lot of shadows, so we don't want too much color up there. You do want it, you need a little bit of it. And see the top some hair up there, top of his head. And blending. That skin and that hair kind of have a little bit of blending, especially where they attach. Because that skin's gonna be seen through under the hair. Then we're gonna jump up here now. Here I just got a bunch of skin colors. Now Custer, I believe, had I like strawberry blonde, isn't it? Is that what it was? A Custer hair color. Because like in this one, it's kind of like a looks like a strawberry, kind of almost red. Custer hair color. Long hair, yellow hair? Well, he had yellow hair, okay. But you're not going to have yellow hair like this guy right here. This, like the, you'll see that, that coloring is a little bit off. I do like to get the pin a little bit more. Um, again, this is kind of looking at different people. As you can kind of see, it's kind of a blondish. Kind of getting an idea of what people are doing for the hair color. And you have to remember, blonde is usually not going to be really yellow. It's not going to look like that. This is from, I think, the okay, the American West. Mine? That's not mine. Um, color, hair color. Uh, why did the Indians call Custer yellow hair? First of all, his hair was not yellow. I read that it's called long hair. Custer was generally known as long hair. Yellow hair. Kind of like. Yeah, this is kind of sometimes what happens. Um, you go lock of hair. This is always good if you can find like that lock of hair. Oh, that's really good. So yeah, it's kind of like blonde. But again, it's not yellow. It's going to be that kind of gonna have a little bit of reds and oranges right there that's a really good reference right there because you have a lock of his actual hair yeah here this guy they're kind of arguing like oh strawberry blonde it looks blonde it's just kind of bleached a little bit more on the end obviously photos again civil war talk really great praise all i have all my all my um Colorized photos are there, and um, Mads Madsen, who does coloring, his are there. There's a lot of, a number of them. Back to that. That's a good, that's a good reference. I mean, I I don't have as many references as some people do, but it's always good to have. The more references, the better. There's a lock of his hair. Actually, that right there. No. Yeah, that's a pretty actually good the painting actually is pretty good color um that uh that lack of hair okay so i do have i don't have them named but like, like this color some of these colors are meant to be like that strawberry blonde that or blonde because again blonde is not going to just be this kind of yellow but you can throw that yellow in and that will kind of help so we'll do that first about a 20 so I'm trying to think who I used this blonde. I think I used this on a hooker, actually. But obviously not 100%. I have that hint. So you see, it's kind of coming through now. You got He's getting a little bit more blonde. More that yellow to the hair. And I kind of put the opacity. That way I can kind of go and adjust where I want to have more of that color, less of that color. And again, here's the danger. If you stopped right here, not to, actually, that's not too bad. 
I kind of want to add a little bit more red. Get, get it over here. It's not going to be very easy to see it over here, but you see, get that hint of that color is there. I think with his mustache, we'll just brush some of that in there. I think Hooker definitely, I had more, definitely used this yellow color a lot more. Because it was a lot more blonde. Let me just pull up Hooker really quick. I think Chamberlain I did too. Chamberlain, I kind of used that. Um, Hooker. Even with hook, like definitely right here, a lot more of that yellow, but there was a mix of that red in there too. I think this one's the good one for that. Yeah, you can see how it's kind of more than at that, that tone there. A little yellow, it's still got the yellow. Got that right there, that color is what I'm looking for. So it's like I, I've seen people doing colorings where it's like they just do like saturation levels and all that and you can get good basic colorings like that, but I really find it it's kind of enjoyable to kind of just go through and brush it in as you go and suddenly there it is, you know. Oh, okay. You know, or like, okay, that's not looking right, add a little bit more and oh, there it is, right? Touched his eyebrows. We got his full skin color on the eyebrows. I usually don't do that. What we're going to do with the skin, we're going to just kind of walk that back under a little bit. Still want to have some skin color because obviously skin very much going through, but you don't just want the skin color 100%. Not looking bad. Let's kind of... Yeah, see, this one's got, it looks like he has a little bit, like in this painting, a little bit more reddish to it. Same with this one. Um, we'll, we'll go a little bit more. Right now, it's kind of just brick. Really throw a lot more of that color on those. Spots right there. Mustache. And you can see how you can see some of the grays. So what then what I do is go over with that skin again and just blend that skin color to that area. But be careful you don't want too much because then you can kind of overlap too much of that skin. Definitely here it's kind of wispy, that wispy uh that go soul patch kind of thing I actually used to have that kind of soul patch thing didn't have the mustache so I'll go with that get that uh mustache thing going <laughs> and we can again go back to this color add some gold again or that yellow I think this color is my strawberry and you can always throw in another one too always just one see it just kind of more layers you add the more like gives you that you're gonna find a cool color gonna fit for what you like that actually looks pretty good um we'll work on it i mean obviously if it i'm gonna kind of after this video i'll kind of probably look around and it's what some other people have colored but that looks pretty good like i said maybe a little bit more i don't want to lose too much of the blondness bad all right Quickly before I finish, so yeah, I got I'm gonna do about six more minutes here. Now this is our background color. I usually do for the Union Generals. I do this blue background color, even though this looks like it's all one solid piece. It's gonna be one color, but I almost every Union General, if it's in this room where most of the pictures are taken by uh, Matthew Brady, 
I do this blue color and then the Confederates being their take pictures usually being taken somewhere else. I have a kind of a brownish color. We're just going to do it around the head kind of show you the result. Of how I do this. I just go again. I like to have this bleed because that's that atmospheric. You can kind of bleed it over a little bit, but you're going to get that because his hair is going to reflect some of that color coming off the wall. It's going to reflect on your hair a little bit. Sometimes what I do, I will even kind of put it in there a little. Go. And don't worry if I go over a little bit because, again, that having that color bleed actually more realistic. Well, having a sharp cutoff. That's just not how colors work in real world. Especially in the photographics. See how things are blurred here, so the that that image that those colors are gonna be blurred together. And I again I suggest I right, let's look at I can actually do it with this um image right here, I think. Let's zoom it in. Actually I don't think it's gonna do it with this one. No, it's just zoomed it just zoomed in all the other stuff. Um let me find a picture. Um, no, I have some. Here's some work from Mads Madsen. He did this one, just looks amazing. I, I don't, this is always the one I'm trying to get to. <laughs> this face just looks. Just right. Sometimes I feel like my stuff pales in comparison, but you know, that's what it is. There's my grandpa Jake. I need to color this one at some point in the during World War Two. Uh, I'm trying to just find a, a got a hardy hat photo. Let's see. So when we look at this, as we zoom in. You can kind of see that blur. See yeah, how that color colors are kind of fading as you get closer. And then as you get further away, you can't really tell. It's just natural. Obviously, this is a natural picture with the natural colors and everything. And that's what's going on here. It's like you know, if you have it just perfect, not going to look right. As you zoom in, pixels and the colors do kind of blend. And that might not have been the best example, but that's what I think. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Let me know what you think. So you, you could just go over this all with blue. That's what I'm actually going to do. It doesn't actually. Yeah. See, it's a little bit too blue. To me. What I will do is just go over it first with the eraser erase some of the blue out of there but you do want that blue especially there you want to have a little blue in there because the blue is going to show through because that hair is not a solid object it's stringy all that down a little bit there oh um We'll kind of go like this then. Edges. We'll just kind of color the top part here. It's actually kind of fun when you get the whole thing colored and you just go like this. See how how that pops different. Yeah. Um at this step, usually when I'm doing this a uh, background layer step, I will then kind of go in kind of in some places, give a little blue. Not too much like that, but a little bit. On those highlight areas will be kind of reflecting a little bit of that blue very subtle most people won't even notice it I won't even notice it if I did it or not
You just kind of look right there. There's Custer. He's in progress. Like I said, it's really cool if I just if I had just waited until later to put that blue in. So we'll we'll take that out for now, and we'll once we get to the end, we'll just there he is. I I've always kind of wanted to do one where it's like I don't color anything else, just color the person, but kind of both. Um, debating if I want to restore this one or not, get rid of these scratches and stuff, or leave it as is. I kind of go back and forth. Um. Looking all right. I feel like there's some more work I could do on the face, and maybe we'll do that next time. But yeah, that, there's a colorization. Um, thanks for stopping by uh, as we color Custer here. Um, and I just get back into doing it. Um, just forgive me on feeling a little, uh, just a little underwhelming. I know, but um, like I said, it's like I'm going through some things right now, and uh. Oh, any encouragement and uh, so let me know what you guys want to see in the channel I know I know we have big big part of this channel currently a lot of stuff is uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator definitely want to get in at least a flight this next week and I'm gonna really try to get down and do that um, for my yeah just for my mental sake um Again, I don't know about American Truck Simulator. Again, American Truck Simulator, stuff like that might be coming back in the future if I switch jobs. Actually look at some teaching jobs, and then I'll be home every day, and especially you know weekends and depending on the load, maybe I get back in that truck simulator. You know, Doing a truck simulator right now is a little kind of weird when I'm driving truck all the time as it is. So yeah, there's Custer, he's looking pretty good. Uh, um, and yeah, probably this, this weekend, hopefully we'll finish it and hopefully we'll get some more people in the chat. I, I know this went up at a kind of a weird time and it's not the usual video, but I hope you guys, um, enjoy this. Just enjoy seeing different things. I like to do a lot of different things. Um, this channel, Martin Wenzel, um, it's going to be a lot of everything. It's always going to be a lot of everything. Um, I'm going to be doing a tier ranking video at some point, whether it's going to be a live stream or will it be a video. I'm going to be doing a tier ranking video, maybe do some more reaction videos. You know, some of that a little bit lighter work kind of stuff, but uh, trying to trying to bring some more history and stuff into this and let me know what you guys want to see. Um, I know I got contingent of people that want to see uh, Flight Simulator, people that want to see American Truck Simulator. I'm hoping I get some more history people in here in the, color, the coloring community. So we're it's going to be all over the place. This is an eclectic channel, and um, if you guys want to support the channel, first of all, like the video, uh, comment below, um, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And there is a link. I do have a Streamlabs where you can donate. You know, buy me a coffee or a pizza. Probably buy. You're probably buying me more a pizza or a you know a hot dog from the roller from the roller grill or whatever. Um, I don't drink coffee, so you're buying me a pizza, let's say, or whatever it is. Um, at some point, I'm going to set up a Patreon and hopefully get, you know, whoever wants to, you know, support the channel that way. Very much appreciate. So I'll try to stop rambling here on that. Um, but thank you to everyone who, who subscribed to the channel and who watches the videos and stuff. I, I, it really keeps it going. I, I really like making the videos and stuff, and I hope that someday that uh, this channel can get pretty big and you know, we can do some really fun stuff. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time. See you probably Friday doing some more coloring or maybe doing a flight. Take care.